Pastor, Pastor, I hope you can sit down. Actually, it's a good idea. I was thinking, can I sit and you stand? No. <laughs> but, um, well, good afternoon to everyone. <laughs> I'm just so glad to be here. <laughs> it's my first time here in Taiwan, and uh, I think I'm going to be back here soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I think my wife will love, love it here because there's so many places to shop. <laughs> That's the anointing of women, so a set of ministry. And so, and so it's exciting to, uh, to be able to meet you and minister to you today. I was asked by Pastor KC and Hope to do prophetic training. You know, this prophetic training, we've been doing prophetic training for many, many years. And we also have another training called Moving in Spiritual Gifts. In fact, that course is one of the most popular courses that we do anywhere. And every time we do that course, it's almost like we have to stop the people signing up because it's too many. Because people always want to know how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And they want, they want to be able to minister to other people. To be a blessing. And so the, 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 actually this course, the, the, the thing I'm going to do this afternoon, will only run for three hours. Hopefully I do have materials on your on your hands. And I, I hope that we, we're, we're able to, I hope that all of you have a material that you're holding on to. If you do not have that, uh, Bertina will be uh, distributing some for those of you. So lift up your hands if you do not have the material. Anybody here? Okay, just I know that I, I don't know if you were able to translate it in. Oh, that's good. That's translated in in uh, my language. Okay, good. Um, we'll try. I'll try my best to be able to finish everything. But if not, we'll hopefully I can come back and finish it. But but this is only three topics. But the normal course would run for two days with a lot of activations. What we're going to do today, I'm going to teach and then I'm going to have you do it. So it's not just me ministering, but all of us will be ministering to each other. So that means all of us will actually begin to practice what we've learned. And I know that every time we do this, people get nervous. Because they feel like, oh no, I might make a mistake. But I always tell them that when we do it here in this atmosphere, it's all practice. So how many know that when you practice, it's okay to make a mistake? So the person right next to you, look at him or her. Tell them, can I practice on you? Okay. So I hope that they, they all agree. That they, that they, they practice one. But before I get into the lesson proper, I just want to take this time to honor uh, Pastor Casey and Hope. And, you know, I've known them for many years. I've, you know, I've uh, been in China because of them. Minister prophetically, not just in every nation, but all over China. And that's because of uh, Pastor Casey and Hope. I've known them for many years. And it's a, the thing, if, part of, if you're part of every nation, you know the pastors for more than 10 years, 20 years. It's it's so embarrassing to say that because we're getting older. But I got saved in every nation or, and in our when I was 19 years old. I was still single. I met my wife, you know, wife in church. I had kids. All my kids were dedicated in church. My best friend is in church. And my, everything in my life is, is, is here. And so, and so that's the beauty of spiritual family. That we're stuck together whether you like it or not. And so I've known Romel and Flor also for many years. And they were part of our church in Penang when I used to pastor our church in, uh, in Malaysia, Penang, Malaysia. So it's a good to reunite with him today. He fed me well this new time. <laughs> so that I can actually teach you. We went to, uh, was that then? Then Tai Fu. So they say that's the best. I need, I need to go back there. <laughs> but anyway, um, any, anyway, I, I, I'm going to show a photo of my family tomorrow. I do have, I do have five children. Yes. Yeah. 
I do have five, and my oldest one got married last year. He's 27 years old. And uh, and uh, and so they live in they live in Singapore. They're part of our every nation church in Singapore. They lead our worship there. And then my 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 second one. Anyway, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm wasting time. So we'll, we'll, we'll share we'll share that. I'll share the photo tomorrow. My iPad here. Okay. Okay. So let's take this time to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, I, I ask you that you would teach us. Lord God, give us understanding. Give us wisdom. Lord, help me as I teach today. Lord, we need time. Help me, Lord God, to finish everything that needs to be said today. In Jesus' name. Now, here in God, uh, anybody here has gone through any training in regards to hearing God. Anybody here? Prophetic? Uh, okay. okay, most of um, Some people have different trainings from different ministries. Uh, and, and like uh, I've been to different uh, trainings also all around. I've been to the one with uh, Bill Johnson in Reading. That was one of the one of the, the, the best uh, prophetic teachings I've I received. I've been to, of course, with, with our own Jim Lefou. And I've been to a few others, you know, in, in the Philippines. Now, all of these trainings are good. But what we're what we teach here today will be in line with the mission and vision of every nation. Now, why, why is it important to say that? Because to us, every time you teach prophetic or prayer without purpose of discipleship and church planting, it becomes, it becomes, it becomes overly mystical. And sometimes it could border to weirdness. And so you will find in the scriptures, and I hope that we don't really have time to discuss that all today, that every time people move in, in, in power, every time people move in the gifts of the Spirit, it is always for the purpose of their hearts being open to receive the gospel. So moving in the prophetic or moving or, 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 or in, if you are in intercession, it's a means to an end. Okay. The goal is always to disciple. The goal is to honor God and make disciples. That is our basically our 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 vision, mission of our divination movement. And so and so there, there, we have a we have an emphasis. But different teachings will have a different emphasis. Like Hillsong, they have an emphasis of uh, worship. When you go to Bill Johnson's church, man, the presence of God is so powerful there. He's a, he's a kind man. I met Bill Johnson and I was able to speak to him. Anybody are familiar with him, Bill Johnson? Yeah. I saw your book, you have the book of his wife. And uh, amazing, amazing guy. But they move in the miraculous. And, and so and so there, there's a bit of a difference too with the way they do things. So everything that we do here has to do with discipleship. It has to do with leadership development. It has to do with church life. Amen? Amen. Now, when, when, you know, every time I teach here in God, there's a risk involved when I teach it. Because when you teach people to hear God, sometimes uh, uh, that this teaching can be abused. For example, for example, you know, when, when anybody here have ever uh, tried to kind of correct somebody in the context of discipleship, and then you, conf you, you kind of confront him maybe of, of his attitude or maybe, maybe something that he's doing. And then he blurts out and comes up to you and tells you, the reason why I'm doing this is because the Lord told me. Uh, 
And it's almost like that phrase the Lord told me is almost like saying, shut up, don't you don't tell me what to do. Now, what what can you do with that? It's almost like people use that as a, you know, the reason why I'm, the reason why I'm living this way is because God told me. So sometimes that phrase also could be abused in terms of relationships. I kid you not, there was a there was a there was a girl that came up to me in our church and said that you know a guy came up to her and said that you're gonna be my wife. Because the Lord told me. <laughs> and so she comes up to me and tells me, How can I beat that? Am I not hearing God? And so, and so I had to ask her, Do you like him? Do you find him attractive? And she said, No. I was like, Forget it, it's not the Lord. <laughs> so there has to be an attraction too. Sometimes the prophetic could be abused. That's why a lot of people don't like prophetic. In fact, churches, a lot, many, many churches, when you say prophetic, it's almost like it's like they're prophetic, it's almost like they're vampires. It's almost like nobody wants to touch the prophetic or gifts. Because a lot of the prophetic is weird. A lot of them, they're out of control. A lot of people that move in the prophetic, they say, nobody can tell me what to do because God said it. And they, and they end up not being submissive to the local leadership of the church. That's why a lot of people don't like the prophetic. It can be abuse. But what, what is the solution for abuse? The solution is not to stop it. But the solution is to equip and to educate. And so that's why we are educating the churches so that the churches can receive the blessing of the prophetic. And so I want to be able to teach people to hear God with boundaries and with context so that we could be a blessing. Now, hearing God. Did you know that, that, that God has a dream? You know, it's not that you know, we just write it down. I, I, I apologize, but I, I could have, I should have included this thing the next few minutes, and I should have included it there in your notes. But just write it down, just write it down in your notes, Joel chapter 2. Uh, when it says there, uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 28. You don't, you don't have to turn there, but let me just quote the scripture. He said, he said it was a prophecy to Joe to give it to Joel. He said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. So God promises that he will pour his spirit. And then he says, Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Now, anybody, any sons here, lift up your hands if you're part of that, your sons, your daughters, and that's all of us. So, the prophecy basically says that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men, gosh, I guess that's me, <laughs> will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even in my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Did you know that, that dream of God for the outpouring of the Spirit of God that was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2? And that verse, and that verse in Job, it was mentioned again. And the Spirit of God was poured out in Acts chapter 2. And then he says, In the last days, I will pour my spirit where your sons and daughters will prophesy. We today are living in that fulfillment, in that perfect fulfillment. I believe that God has poured out His people to us. And sons and daughters are able to prophesy. Now, does that mean everybody will have to give the prophecy? The answer is no. Does that mean everybody will be prophets? The answer is no. But God expects all of us, the church, to be prophetic. 
Now, what does that mean to be perfecting? Perfecting basically means is knowing the heart and mind of God and applying it to a situation. Did you know that the church should be perfecting? Even if you don't call yourself perfecting, but in our DNA, we are all called to be perfecting. Why? Because all of us has the ability to hear God. God has put in our DNA the ability to hear His voice. Everybody that's seated here this afternoon can hear the voice of God. The problem is not is God speaking, but the, the, the issue many times is that are we listening? Because God is constantly speaking. Did you know that, that in our nature, now, our naked eye cannot see airwaves. There are, there are, there's a, a lot of communication that's going on that we do not see. But like, for instance, the radio. There's a lot of communication going around us. But the only way you access radio is when you put on, turn on your radio and put it in the right channel. Then you can hear it. You see, God is constantly speaking. He's speaking to us right now. Did you know from the beginning in Genesis chapter 1? That was God's original intention. When He created Adam and Eve, He wanted to relate to a people. So they had a conversation, they talked. They, they probably had high fives. Can you imagine, can you imagine the Bible says that Adam could hear the voice of God. He could hear God coming. Of course, we all know what happened. You know, there was a snake that suddenly spoke. And remember, you know, Adam and uh, Adam uh, and, and, and Eve all of a sudden realized they were naked when they ate that fruit. Which God commanded not to eat. So they ate that fruit and then all of a sudden, you know, God came in the cool of the day. And he said and Adam and Eve they were hiding. And, and and God said, Where are you? And then and Adam said, We're afraid because we heard you. Can you imagine all this time they were not afraid of God? But after they disobeyed God, all of a sudden they were afraid of God. And then and then and then God speaks to Adam and asks him what, what happened? Well this you know this this thing, this this snake that you know he was blaming the snake. And then he said we ate this and then we realized we were naked. Now, everybody here ever thought of that? I mean, I mean, they were created naked. They were probably naked all, all this while. But it was the only time, you know, they realized they were naked. And then God asked him, who told you? Who told you you were naked? Now, you have to understand, from the beginning, the voice they only heard was the voice of God. That was the only voice. They were they recognize the voice of God. They know the voice of God. And all of a sudden there was another voice that came in. That's why God asked them, who told you? Because there was another intruder. There was another voice that came into their life. And so you know what happened? Because of that relationship with man and God was shattered. And communication lines was shattered as well. They were banished from the garden. But all through scripture from the book of Genesis, all through Malachi, even though the relationship of communication line was shattered, God will always raise up a man to be able to communicate to so that man can a prophet or somebody could speak to the people. God will raise up an Abraham. God raised up a Moses. God raised up a Joshua. God raised up a David. God raised up a Samuel. God raised up every. There was always a man that God could speak to so that that man can relay the message to the people. Because God is constantly desiring to speak to his people. He always wants to speak to us. And so, coming into the New Testament. 
We all know Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for our sins. He purchased us so that we may have a relationship with Him again. So those that believe in Him, you know, will have eternal life. And so because of that, when we give our life to Christ, all of a sudden, the, the ability to hear God was restored again. That's why Pastor Casey quoted that scripture that says that my sheep hear his voice. So all of us can hear the voice of God. Amen. There are guidelines to hearing the voice of God. Let me, let me share some of the things that, uh, that there, there are benefits to hearing the voice of God. The first benefit, obviously, is we will know God's will. We will fulfill God's will in other words. Uh, number two, uh, number two benefit of uh, of hearing the voice of God, we will be prosperous and successful. And then number three, and then I will go through each one uh, very quickly, and then we will be effective in advancing God's kingdom. So number one, when we no, it's not here. Sorry, it is. It is still not on your notes. Please forgive me. Uh, I just felt I had to share that before I get into the notes. So. <laughs> don't, 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 please don't, don't be angry with me. But, uh, but uh, I, I, I just had to do it. Because I realized I had to build a foundation first before, before I talk about that topic. Okay, because hearing the voice of God. <laughs> Uh, there are benefits to hearing his voice. You know, the reason why Pastor Casey and Hope is here because they heard God. You know, I met Bertina in New York. And I, she's not here because of her, her own, because, okay, you know, I, I like it here. You know, it wasn't because she likes it here, of course, that's part of it. <laughs> she doesn't like it here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but she's here because God spoke to her. I mean, the reason why I went to Malaysia was because God spoke to me. The reason why, as Christians, we are where we are is because God speaks to us. The reason why I'm here today is because God spoke to me and I need to be here. So you know the words that we are guided by the voice of God. And so our movement, our decision should be based on just the voice of God. We know that the Bible says Joshua 1 8. He said that that as you obey my 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 word, my voice, you'll be prosperous and successful. And of course, we will be, you know, we, we will be able to advance the kingdom of God when we learn to hear the voice of God. But what are the guidelines? How, how do we know that God is speaking? The first thing that we need to understand that when God speaks that that God speaks through the scriptures. Okay, there are many ways that God speaks, but the primary way that God speaks is always through the Bible. Okay, the Bible is the final authority for everything that we do or say. Now, what does that mean? Now, if you sense God speaking to you, and then you, 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 you begin to hear a voice, but if that voice is contrary to the Word of God, then we are to reject that voice and follow the Word of God. You understand? Because the basis for everything is the Word of God. Like if somebody comes up to me, a married guy comes up to me and tells me the Lord spoke to me to lead my wife so that I can marry another woman. Now, the, Bible, the Bible is against that. The Bible doesn't say that. So that means what he's hearing is not God. Because we are to base everything from the Word of God. Now, there are some things that God will tell you that will not specifically be in the Word of God. Like, for example, to brush your teeth doesn't say in the Bible. To brush your teeth. But how many know that the Spirit of God can sometimes remind us to brush our teeth if we forget to brush our teeth? <laughs> you, you, under, you understand what I'm saying? Like for example, to, uh, when sometimes God will speak to you, I want you to bless that person. You know, and then you go there. How many know from the Spirit of that Word, that is exactly what the Word of God says, to be a blessing to people. 
And so we approach that person and to be a blessing to that person. So you understand what I'm saying? So everything that God speaks has to be based in the spirit of the word of God. That's a good, that's a good uh, guideline or boundary when God begins to speak. Uh, another way too that God speaks, God speaks to us also through the Holy Spirit. Now, now somebody was asking me yesterday, somebody, how do you know that the Lord is speaking? The word speaks. The Holy Spirit is when we when when we receive the when we get born again. The Spirit of God is living in us. And all of a sudden, our spirits are awakened. There's a sensitivity to the Spirit of God. And many times, when the, when the anybody here ever experienced that when the Spirit of God spoke to you. I hope I hope all of us experience that. Okay? The Holy Spirit can speak to us. How many of you have ever watched the movie and then right in the middle of that scene of that movie, you end up crying in that movie? You ever cry in the movie? Anybody ever experience that or just me? <laughs> and sometimes you're you're afraid to look to your right to your left and you want to you don't want, you don't want to wipe your tears because sometimes because sometimes when you're watching the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. How many of you ever experience you're driving and all of a sudden you're listening to worship and all of a sudden the Spirit of God begins to speak to you? And all of a sudden, you just get to look to it, especially here. I don't know if you have car tents in, in Manila with all the cars are pin tents, so you don't see it. Car tents? You know, car, you know those dark uh, glasses of car. Oh, okay. Then, 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 Way to that that God speaks is through other people. Now let me let me. I always say this when I teach people to hear God. That when I begin to when I when I begin to hear God, sometimes I I tell other people what God is telling me. And I talk to people. That's what they call counsel. And I bounce it off with people that I trust. Like for example, um, you know, I'm just thinking about it. There are many examples, but I'm trying to get one. Uh, anyway, let, let, let me tell you something. Just just about five days ago, I spoke to my pastor, Pastor Steve. I had to. I was the Lord was speaking to me about a city. A city. Please, please don't tell anybody about this. This is secret. Now nobody in Manila knows this yet. It's not the first ones that will know this, but nobody knows this. But I've been uh, moving in the prophetic for four years now. But the Lord has been putting a city in my heart again. So I was nervous. I was nervous. You know, what do I say? Am I crazy? It's almost like, Lord, I said, Lord, I turned 50 last month. And then, Lord, I said, I'm crazy. Go again somewhere. So I went to Pastor Steve. I told Pastor Steve, shaking, and said, Pastor Steve, the Lord told me that I, I feel like the Lord speaking to me. What do you think? And he looked at me and goes, I, I, told, I told him, I feel I'm too old. He said, So. <laughs> he said, If God puts that in your heart, then. And then he ended up encouraging me. In other words, I, I I was willing to take what God is telling me and willing to share it with other people and ask their advice. Problem many times is that we're too possessive when it comes to hearing God. It's almost like when we hear God, we feel like we have to defend it. We feel like this is what God told me. And our mindset is that people won't, won't, won't agree with me. This is what God is telling me. And so what, what, what happens, what ends up happening, people don't want to share with other people what God is telling them. And so they, a lot of people, so a lot of people go off and sometimes leave church and sometimes do on their own Go on their own because they feel like they can't tell anybody. People won't understand. Think of from experience. If you're hearing God, and if you're the only one hearing it, it's probably not God. Because other people will will sense it as well. 
That's why if you begin to hear God, that's why I, I had to share this foundation first. Because as we teach people to hear God, we've got to learn to be humble enough to open up what God is saying and, and allow other people to speak into our lives and even be bold enough to tell us you missed that. And I tell you, my pastor Steve has always told me, I don't think it's God. And I don't get, I don't get offended. And because I trust him. And I hope that when we teach people to hear God, that, that when people counter that, I hope that we don't get offended. How many know we need people like that? Now, there I could say more, but we will now go to the lesson. <laughs> Is everybody glad we're going to the lesson now? Okay. Um, let me see. What's the first one there on your on your uh, purpose? Purpose. Okay. Let me get to my page. Okay. The purpose of the gift of prophecy. If you have your well. For, let's read 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 1 to 11. Paul speaking here to the church in Corinth, he said, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. Do I, do I read it all? Or, oh, I have the Chinese. Or, I'll read it all first and you read it in Chinese. Or should you just read it in Chinese first? Or we can just English and Chinese at the same time. Okay, okay, you can do it. Okay. So I'll put the Okay. Uh, yeah. Who is speaking by the Spirit of God? Says, so she's the first. And no one can say that she's the Lord. Except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service. But the same Lord. Different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge. By means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that same Spirit, one Spirit. To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing uh, between uh, spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Um, well, First Corinthians talks about uh, just the different gifts. If you look at the first verse there, some version says now about the spiritual. There's, if you want to get the literal translation of that, it talks about Paul was encouraging the church in Corinth to be able to recognize the spiritual world. And he tells them that you could not be, you should not be ignorant when it comes to the spiritual world. And then he, had, he began to tell them that at one time you were pagans and you used to worship idols. Now let, let me give you a background of Corinth. Now the people in Corinth, they were new believers. Their hearts, their hearts were changed. But sometimes their thinking has not been renewed. You know people like that? You know, they're changed, their lives are changed, but but their 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 thinking has not been renewed. Sometimes their habits hasn't changed yet. Now that's only for new believers, but if you've been walking in the church for three years, four years, and your if your habits hasn't changed, then there's probably something wrong. But new believers, they have a tendency to revert back to their own thinking, even though they're already transformed in their hearts. And so the, the, the people in Corinth, they come from a culture where idolatry was rampant. There was a lot of idols all around the city. And their idols represented, one idol represented one thing. Just like even in, in the Philippines, 
I'm a, I was once a Roman Catholic. Uh, we have a saint for one thing. Let's say when we were traveling to the province, we have a saint that we pray to for safe travels. If there was one thing, if we wanted healing, we had to go somewhere to another church because we get healing there, there's a saint there. That's how the thinking of the church in Corinth, that was their thinking. So Paul had to tell them, all the gifts come from the same spirit. In other words, there's only one source. That's why you notice if you if you read the, the verse, Paul constantly had to tell them that it all came from the same Spirit, the same Lord, and one God. Because the tendency of the Corinthians is that they would look at prophecy and they would say maybe there's a there's a God for prophecy. And then they would look with uh, the word of wisdom, they would say, Oh, there's a God for the word of wisdom. And he would look at one gift and say, Oh, there's probably a God for the word of knowledge. And so on and so forth. So different gifts, the tendency of the people there is to think that there's a God associated with that gift. But Paul had to tell them, No, 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 no. All of this come from the same spirit, the same God. One Lord. And he has given gifts to all for the common good. Now, everyone look up here. Look around this room. All everybody here in this room are gifted. You have 13 names and say, hey, you, you have a gift. All of us have gifts from the Lord. It was God who distributed the gifts to everybody. Now, sometimes some people, let's say, let's just say healing. Some people they have a, a greater tendency or a greater measure when it comes to healing. Now it doesn't mean that only her will have the gift of healing. But all of us can move in healing. But there's some people who will move in a greater degree of healing. Some people they didn't all of us here can prophesy, but not everybody will have the same measure of prophecy. But everybody's gifted here. The reason why God puts gifts in the church so that we can build up the church. Because God wants to encourage everybody in the church. God uses the gifts to encourage and bless the church. And so those are the reasons why God gives us Yes. There's a verse also here uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 5. Let me read that. Follow the way of love. Good. You, you, yeah, that, that's a nice verse in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 5. You have it on your notes. He said, Follow the way of love. And eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men like God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. So, it, 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 so Paul was saying, follow the way of love. How do you, how do you believe that God's love? How do you believe that God loves you? But you didn't know that God uses people to express that love. That's why He has given the gifts to be able to express the, the love of God to people. So He tells them all the way and eagerly desires, especially in the prophecy. Why? Because He says prophecy gives them the reason for prophecy in verse 3 because it's, prophecy speaks for their strengthening, for their encouragement. For, for comfort. Did you know that everybody that's in the church needs those three? They need to be encouraged. They need to be comforted. And they need to be edified. Everyone. You know, tomorrow morning when we go to church, and if, depending on what service you go to, everybody that walks into that door has gone through battles outside. 
The problem is probably they felt rejected outside. They probably feel so low. And so everybody that comes here, you know, they can give you a smile on their face. They can probably tell you, you ask them how you are, and never say, great, everything's great. But deep in their hearts, if they're going to be honest, everybody is going through a battle. And so when people come in here in this, the four corners of this church, everybody needs to be edified, encouraged, and, and be lifted up. And that's why we can have the spirit of prophecy to be able to speak that to them. Amen. Amen. Now, to edify or build up the church, it is basically in your blanks, you have that in your blanks, to strengthen, encourage, and offer. Prophecy also in 1 Corinthians 14, 26 is also there to reveal the heart and mind of God. Please hold them. Do you have it or do I have mine? Good. Okay. To reveal the heart and mind of God. Okay, and then the C, uh, it's also, uh, E rather, E is fully strong. I hope you have that, it's strong. E is fully strong. So the, the the prophecy prophetic is there to strengthen, encourage, comfort, to reveal the heart and mind of God. You know, let me let me say something about the, to reveal the heart and mind of God. Every time we move in the prophetic, it is an opportunity for people to see and even experience the heart of God. And hopefully that when we start to move in the in these gifts. It is a glimpse for people to experience that love. And uh, you know, when, when every time I prophesy to people, 80% of the time, they end up crying and weeping. And sometimes I ask them, you know, why, why are you crying? Why, why are you crying? And most of the time they will tell me because I sense God's love for me. And then you know that's the most important. Sometimes we think prophecy is all about accuracy. But really, the prophetic is all about expressing the Father heart of God. And so when people experience the heart of God, people are changed. Okay, and then I think we're in number two. Is that number two? The, the next one? Uh, Jason? Number two. It's also another thing for the prophetic is that it opens the hearts of unbelievers to God. Did you know, did you know that when we talk about the gifts, yes, the church, they're blessed when we operate in the gifts inside the church. But did you know that the gifts are also used outside of the church? You know, like I was telling the story yesterday with the college kids. That, that sometimes God tells me to minister to people that, that, that are outside. One, one particular case was that I was taking a plane from Washington, D.C., flying all the way to Seattle. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a red eye flight. It was meaning it was uh, midnight. I was tired, I was sleepy. It was a full flight. And then, and then, uh, and then lo and behold, my role. <coughs> The row I was I was sitting on the aisle <laughs> and the chair right in the middle was empty and there was somebody on the window so I was really happy I said well wow, God I'm gonna sleep but the person in the window kept talking to me <laughs> and I wanted to tell hey it's 1 30 a.m. can you sleep I was I was I was just and then all of a sudden the spirit of God began to speak to me. And he started to give me a word of knowledge. I, I, I wish I could explain that if we have more time to explain the, different, the differences of word on word of wisdom and, and prophecy. But anyway, he began to speak to me about that person. And the Lord began to tell me that that person has been separated. 
And he's not living with his children. And he is, uh, his faith is ebbing away. And then I was saying, so, so Lord, how am I going to tell him? And, I, and the Lord began to speak and said, pray for him. Now, I'm saying, how would I introduce myself? I, I'm a prophet. <laughs> Man, if I said that, he'd probably, excuse me, change my chair. And then I was crazy here. So you don't introduce yourself as that. So I just told him that I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian and I pray for people. Can I pray for you? And by the way, when you begin to pray for people outside, don't be weird. <laughs> you don't have to use words that you use in church. You don't say that you know in the sanctification and justification. You don't have to use words that people don't understand, especially outside. So I was very, I was very conversational. I didn't close my eyes and go. I didn't pray for him that way. I prayed with my eyes open. And I looked at him. And I began to pray. I said, uh, Dear Lord, I made it as simple as possible. I said, Dear Lord, help this man because he's been uh, he's been hurting and he misses his family. Lord, touch him today. Uh, Lord, bring restoration to him. Man, he, after I prayed that, man, he started just crying. And I had to call the, the stewardess to get tissue so that we can wipe his feet. Right after that, he gets his computer. I thought I was, I, I'll be able to sleep on it. But no, I was wrong. He got his computer, opened it up, showed all the pictures of his children. He shows his children, this, this, this guy, I've been living with them. True enough, everything that the Lord told me was exactly what, what, what he was telling me. And then he goes, uh, you know, I'm not, I've been separated with, with, with my wife. And he said that, you know, sometimes I feel that God is God's angry with me. But now that you pray for me, I realize that God is for me. But you know, I never saw him again. But you know what? That is an example of of the gifts that God has given him to be a blessing to people. You know, in, in your small group in your campus, you can you can do that. You can go there and you can be guided by the Spirit of God. You don't have to go to a person. You know what? The Lord spoke to me. You know, you don't have to even say the Lord spoke. You can just go there. And be a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. Uh, so it opens the hearts of, of unbelievers. You know, sometimes uh, when 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 gifts come, we, when 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 God now I think I, I establish enough that we're all gifted, right? Now there's there's a scripture here. Uh, from 1 Corinthians 12, 21 to 25. But it gives us, gives us also uh, uh, some guidelines that we don't think just because you're gifted doesn't mean that you're better than everybody else. That it talks about, let's say, if you're the hand. I mean, how many of the hand is always, always shown? Let's say you're, you're, you're the face. Right when you go to stores here, when you go to you know shops, the face is always shown. You know your hand is always shown. It's a lotion commercial. I mean that part, the body is always shown. Maybe maybe you're the hand. But sometimes what you're if you're the, the foot. I mean you know, nobody sees sees my my the the. the, the this this part is always covered. But how many know just because it's covered doesn't mean it's not important? Now how many here when you when you see Pastor Casey here preach every Sunday? How many know you see him all the time? But how many know the people the chairs you're sitting on right now has been prepared by ushers? That we do not see or even hear. But does that mean that the pastor is better than the one who's doing usher? No. Everybody's equally important. So that's the same thing with gifts. Some people will have a gift of encouragement. Some of them never, never come up here on stage. But they do have that gift. Now, let, let me give you some. some uh, can 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 we uh, look at some verses there from your 
if you can click to the next slide, please. What's the next? What, what is, what's after that? There's a uh, next is this include uh, the readiness to minister to others. Yeah, just go on. Yeah, dead. Uh, I'd like to look at this. As we talk about the gifts, as we talk about being a, a blessing to people, my prayer is that all of us will be ready on and off season to minister to people. Number two, there are uh, uh, appropriate times when to release the gift. The best place to release that are in small groups, uh, prayer meetings, and worship services. These are some of the, of course, part of that too that I just mentioned also in, in public places. But when you do that in public places, do it do it with uh, with great sensitivity. And uh, and make sure that you're not weird. <laughs> now, in the context of church services, there's also a practical limit to the number of, uh, of people giving a prophetic utterance. It talks about in First Corinthians 14, 27 to 29. It talks about two or three people that give the prophetic word. Do you guys do that here in the service here? Do you guys do it, let's say, in the middle of worship, and then all of a sudden somebody will come up and share a verse or, or a scripture? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. So that's a good practice. Uh, we we actually practice that in, in our churches uh, in Manila. Anybody here? Anybody here? Uh, do that, anybody here? Uh, anybody here? Thor, anybody? Bertina, anybody who comes up here? And, and Adora. Yeah, Adora. Okay, that's good. So, hopefully we can practice, hopefully we can see that practice more and more. So, in our, in our so there's, a, there's a practical limit to uh, the people uh, ministering. There's also number four, the need to judge or evaluate prophetic utterance. Uh, okay, once again, when you talk to me, when I talk about ju judging it, sometimes you have to see the, uh, in relation to the spirit of the, with, with, what the spirit of God is doing at that particular time. Like one example, we had one service, and then somebody in the service got the microphone because we trust we trusted this lady. She gives a word of the Lord and tells the whole congregation that you are in sin. And you don't repent. And then, of course, Pastor Manny Carlos, our, our president in Manila, he had to get up there to, to and he was wondering, what do I say after that? So he got up there, the Lord gave him wisdom. And then he goes, uh, that prophetic word is for two people here. But all of you, that's not for you. That's for if you are here today, you need to repent. That's probably two, three people here. But for all of you, no, that's not the word for you. How many know? Praise God. That, that, that is wisdom from the Lord. <laughs> so sometimes you have to judge what the Spirit is doing in a congregation. And that time that word was not appropriate. And so sometimes you have to learn how to flow with the Spirit of God. And lastly, there needs to be a, a, a submission, submissiveness towards spiritual authority. That's the last one. The, the last uh, submissiveness towards spiritual authority. You know, we we're particularly talking about the gift of prophecy. Uh, I gave you a, just a brief background, the purpose of the gift of prophecy. Uh, to be an encouragement, to be a blessing to people. Now, what I want to do, if you can, you can, if you, if you have a piece of paper, 
Listen, anybody here have a piece of paper? An extra piece of paper? I want to do a little bit of an activation. Okay. Um, How big should be the piece? Just uh, pick, uh, pick where they can write maybe one paragraph, five, five ten, just oh, write it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, each person. We can do that. I want to practice. Everybody say practice. That's I want to practice uh, us to be able to hear God. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take a five minute break? And then we'll prepare for the paper and when we come back we will do the activation. Okay. What we'll do, this exercise is called writing down the thoughts of God. Okay. Uh, what I want us to do uh, is to hear God and and write down what God is telling us. Okay. So I'll give you an exercise and I want you to write down what you feel God is speaking to you right now. Okay, um, just, just uh, maybe you can have five, six sentences. And, uh, and then if you are, if you are a guy, just write down for the Lord, the Lord says my son. And then if you're a sister or a woman, just write down for the Lord says my daughter. I want to be more personal uh, and, and I, I, I want you to write down what God is telling you. Uh, there's a, how many know that the Lord constantly thinks about us? He has many things to say about us. And every time we do this exercise, it really liberates a lot of people. Because they begin to recognize the voice of God. And I'll explain that a little bit later on after the exercise. Is that clear to everyone? Okay, uh, just, just write down by faith what God is telling you. Okay, I'm going to give you five minutes and I want you to write down what the Lord's telling you. Let me pray first. Heavenly Father, Lord, speak to us today and help us to hear your voice. You promise that you hear your voice, the voice of the shepherd. Remove every fear, remove every intimidation. Speak to us. Okay, let's be quiet before the Lord. We'll do it all together in just a few seconds. Okay, open your eyes. Smile. Okay, five minutes. One, two, go. Right. Okay. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. Yes. Now, how many here, how many here, you felt like the Lord spoke to you today? Okay, that's what I want to do. Can you please uh, share it with a person right next to you? Is that okay? <laughs> if you want to, I know there might be. Uh, is that okay with you to share it with one another? Get the partner. Okay, get the partner. Decide who goes first. Okay. Now, if you're going first, lift up your hands. Okay. How about you guys? Who's first? Okay, he's first. Okay. Does everybody have a partner? Who does not have a partner? Yeah, okay. Okay. So what what I want to do, I want I want you to share what the Lord spoke to you, okay? what He said to you. Okay. So the count of three, I want you to go, and then I'm going to give you one minute each. So when I say after one minute is up, and then we'll have the other person share what the Lord told them. 
Is that is that clear? Okay. One, two, go. Now you said that anybody heard something good, something good that you heard from your partner or anybody here? Okay, good. If you heard something good, why don't you encourage them to share it? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Come on now, yes. We have one? Yes, one. Okay, four more. Come on. I should share. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Four. Yeah. No, no, she'll read. Everyone reads her own. But if you heard hers and she it was good too, you should tell her to come on too. <laughs> come on, please. Yes, who else? Okay, we have, we have, how about you? You want to share? Yeah? Is that? Come on, why don't you hurt you? Okay, let's start with Romel. Let's do Romel. You need to interpret right here. Okay, the, Lord, the Lord says, My son, I love you. What are our I I know that many times you have questions. But I want you to continue to trust me. I am a good provider. But you will see this year and the coming years are blessings upon blessings that you have never imagined. The favors upon favors will be upon you and your family. Continue to trust me, for I have a great plan for you. Amen. Let's give Romel a big hand. That's good. Good Let's hear from, uh, what's your name? Ethan. 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 Okay, Ethan. Well, I used to try to do this thing Yeah. Do you use Chinese and you interpret English? Yeah. 
I'm your Lord. Your God. You can strong and be a man. My grace is sufficient for you. Through my spirit can do everything. Far beyond your wildest imagination. I'm the one who holds you from your right hand side. You will never slip. I will manifest my glory and kindness in you. I'm a faithful and living God. I'll change every curse into grace and blessing. I'm the God that creates everything. I'll be with you forevermore. Praise God. Yeah. Therefore, you. You can relax and just be yourself. I'm watching you. I'm pleased with you. Be happy. You're in good company. Keep smiling. I love you. I love you. Praise God. For, uh, for the Lord says, my son and my daughter, uh, you don't have to live in the darkness anymore. It feels like you've been stuck in a dark tunnel. And there's a long way to go. But the Lord is telling you, I'm shedding a light in the darkness. In the dark place that has seemingly banished you. I'm shedding a light in the darkness that you may see clearly the bright future that I have promised you. Okay, you go on your way back. That's great. Yes. Don't shy. Don't shy. That's Filipino version. I was not forsaken to be already. Okay, and you will see my favor. You will be afraid. 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 Yes. Sorry, I forced you, but I, I really want to hear what that's done. <laughs> my daughter, trust my voice, my spirit in you. Don't be afraid to step out in line with what I've imparted in you. Um, don't be so hard on yourself. I'm proud of you. And I'm with you every step of the way. Make sure you, you stop every now and then and just breathe. Reflect, listen. Just be honest, anybody here had a hard time doing this? You heard of the Okay, we had one. Anybody else? Anybody so else? That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, sometimes wait. it's a practice that we need to learn because sometimes the hindrance to hearing God could be fear or over analysis. Because sometimes we over analyze. You know, sometimes faith. You just have to step out in faith. And 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 sometimes that's that's why sometimes we we end up trying to figure out things. And we end up not making a step forward. Um, it's okay, just be patient, don't worry. My prayer, hopefully, 
the next exercises that we do, you'll do better. That's why it's going to be a stretch of faith for some of us. But hang in there. Now, I just want to just ask you, what what are the things that you noticed when people were giving their, their word? What do you notice from every word that was what came out from the things that they read? It was encouraging. Okay? That's good. Anything else that you notice? Anyway, what else do you notice from that word, the words that were being read? Yes, Most of them that is so true. Anybody else notice from back there? Anybody know you notice anything from could words you, that were coming out? Could you repeat what Bertina said because I don't think they. Okay, know. what did Bertina in your video? Uh, most of them had affirmed who God was to them. That is good. That is clear. Yes. Yes. It's a lot about the future. A lot about the future. Okay. What else? Anything that you notice? Yes, back there. The problem is that God had the promise. Things that God Oh, the Lord, what He would do, like a promise. Yeah, that was good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Ethan, anything you notice from Yeah. Yes, Good. Hi. This is the sense of. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's a lot. Relation. Huh? Relationship. Relationship. Those are some. Good. Well, every time, every time we do this exercise, <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. That's why I make this exercise the first exercise. This is the U.S. Because individuals will first have to learn to hear for themselves. And one of the things that I noticed <laughs> is that God was not angry. Because a lot of times when we, when we, a lot of Christians actually think that God is angry with them. They always feel like God is going to scold them. Or God is going to take his lightning and, and throw his lightning at them. And sometimes we feel down, we feel condemned. But when we began to do this exercise, everywhere I go, people cry. Just, just last week at this activation to uh, to about 600 people in a big auditorium. There was, such a, there was such a hush in the crowd and people were crying and people were wiping their tears. Because most of them realized that God was not angry with them. You see, the prophetic always builds us up. The prophetic always God always speaks to our potential. God always speaks to what could be. Remember Zacchaeus, God spoke to him what he could be. Every time, every time God speaks, it's always to lift up his people. And so that's why I'm encouraged by the words that were spoken to you. See, you know, that's the very same thing that when we begin to speak to other people. The same operation that we did to hear God for ourselves is the same process when we give a word to other people to bless them and encourage them. Okay, our next topic uh, right now uh, is uh, is this been helpful for you guys? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the next topic? No, let's go to how God speaks. I'd like to skip and let's let's look at uh, how God speaks. Okay. I think we've established a foundation that God is a speaking God. He constantly speaks. One of the questions that people ask me, and I received that question again yesterday. How do you know? How do you know that God is the one speaking to us? You know. That same question I asked our senior prophet, uh, Jin Fu. And I always tease everybody I call. Anybody here familiar with Jin Fu? He is not from this planet. <laughs> I, 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 I always tease him. Because that guy, that guy, that guy's ability to hear God is something else. 
you know, I prophesy with him every year we go to Hawaii together. And sometimes I put him in a room and we prophesy together. And sometimes we be together and then both of us will be prophesying over a group. He'll go first. The prophesy probably 10 minutes. And then he goes, Jordan. And I look at him, man, you didn't leave some. <laughs> And then he would always, he would always tell me, there's more, there's more. So he was teaching me to dig deeper, to hear what God has to say. And then he would always encourage me. So, so it's always fun, you know, uh, to, to be able to prophesy with, with Pastor Jim. But I asked him a, a question, I said, what's your secret, Pastor Jim? You know, and then he looked at me and said, you know, there are no secrets. What do you mean no secrets? Why do you hear, you know, because he said, I've been reading my Bible since I was five years old or six years old, but you know, at a very young age, or maybe eight, very young, he started reading his Bible and never missed reading his Bible. And he said, there are no secrets. The only thing that you have to learn consistently is to read your Bible and to pray every day. Mm-hmm. When I was listening to him, I go, really? Oh. Yes, because he said, as you learn to practice, read the Bible and pray to him and listening to his voice. That's how you become a great preacher. That's how you become a great counselor. That's how you become a great person that moves in the gifts. Because you're familiar with the voice of God. You know, uh, I've been married now, I told you, I've, I've been married for 29 years, celebrating 29 years this year. And, and that's a long time. And every time I leave the house, I know the voice of my wife. I know the tone of her voice. Even if she does not tell me certain things, by the very tone of her voice, I know what she's saying. Like for example, when I will leave the house, she'll go, So when she says that, by the tone of her voice, I know I missed something at home. Around the I did not put my clothes back in that clothes hamper. So I go, what? And she'll tell me, you did this again. So I know, I know she's angry again at me. So even though she did not tell me the reasons, by the very tone of her voice, I know what she's saying. Or sometimes she would go, uh, so. <laughs> no, she just said, I don't have to figure out what that means. Guess what? It's almost like, I miss you, you forgot to kiss me. How many of I know that because I've been living with her for 29 years. I know her voice. I have, a, all, I have five, like I told you, and my youngest one, all of them, I used to deposit them in a, in a what do you call that? In, in the vaults. That they, you, you, there's a lot of balls, small so balls in the vault. You know that? Uh, like a playground. Yeah, like, like a playground. The parents, they're not allowed to enter this playground. It's a big, big playground. They can go sky. And then all the parents would leave their kids there and we would all be outside. We would call all the parents and all the kids play inside. And then after, maybe after every 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 two minutes, a, a kid would scream. And then we would all, all the parents would all <laughs> and then and then and then either one of them will say ah something and then we will think about and then later on you hear and then that like, that's ours <laughs> and then we go around and we go around and we go around and we go around and say now why because because I know the voice of my dog now how do you learn to hear the voice of God there's no secrets. It's learning to spend time with you. That's why every day when you read your Bible, when you pray every day, and you quiet your soul, and you begin to be familiar with His voice, that's how we learn to hear the voice of God. So that when you come to moments where you can begin to encourage, you're familiar with the voice of God. That's why hearing the voice of God has to do with us growing in our relationship. I think that's my first point. That's my first point here. Uh, it says here, 
what is the normative way that God speaks to you as we grow? In relationship with Him, we also grow in our ability to discern His voice. You know, it, it says in Hebrews 5.13, it says, But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their, their powers of discernment trained by constant practice. Ever say constant practice? To distinguish good from evil. Constant practice. Ever say constant practice? Third ever say constant practice. Now, does that mean people make, make mistakes? Yes, I make mistakes. But how do you know that it's God in the early stages? You have to learn, you have to, learn to take some risks. A lot of people say that faith is spelled R I S K. Faith is spelled risk. And many times I, I, I did take some risk when I, when I prophesied. You know, let me give you some stories. You know, I, I, when I, when I, sometimes when I prophesy, I close my eyes. I don't want to look at their faces. Because there was one time I was prophesying to this couple. Their facial expression changed. Because when I was prophesying, they, their, their face of the wife goes. <laughs> they were, it's all about like, so I, it's almost like I know that I, I'm probably missing what I'm trying to say. And, uh, and you know, I missed, I missed it so many times. Well, does it mean that I should stop? No, that means I need to learn to practice, constant practice to discern, to hear the voice of God. It comes with us growing in Him, it comes by constant practice. So, so the only way you'll know, one of the re way that you'll know that it's God speaking for you or just, just you, is when you step out in faith and do it. Anybody here try? I don't know if this ever happened to you. You, you, you felt like God was speaking to you to share something in the service after the, during the worship. Or during, during prayer meetings. And then all of a sudden, you kept hesitating, you kept going. You just don't know whether you're going to share it or not. And then all of a sudden, somebody goes up there and grabs the mic and shares a verse, and it was exactly the same verse that you were supposed to share. Anybody ever have to you? So that means you know that God has been speaking to you. Now, the only way you'll know is actually take the risk and do it. Provided that it's for encouragement, strength, and comfort. You are always safe. As long as you know that the word you're going to be giving is for encouragement, strength, and comfort. If you ask yourself the question, if I hear these very words, will that encourage me? Will that comfort me? Will that lift me up? When I receive the very words. So those are the, some of the guidelines to know whether what you're saying is from God or not from God. Okay. Now we're, remember, we're just talking about the gift of prophecy. We're not even talking about the office of the prophet. That's a whole new realm that, that, that we're not even going to be talking about. So, um, the, the, the gifts that I showed, uh, read earlier today in 1 Corinthians 12, there are what, what I call revelatory gifts. Uh, there are three. There, it, that's a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and prophecy. Okay, these are these are gifts that are intertwined together. To speak to people for their encouragement, strength, and comfort. Now let me differentiate just a little bit. Uh, the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is a certain fact about a person. A person's past, a person. Person's present. This one has got nothing to do with educational background. It's a certain information that's only dropped by the Spirit of God. It's almost like it's almost like an email by the Spirit. He gives it to you. You have no idea how you got that. You have no idea how it came to you. It just boom. It just came to you. And 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 sometimes when you just when you begin to have the word of knowledge about a person, not all not everything that you receive should be blurted out 
Sometimes the information that you receive will only for would be for your information. Now the word of wisdom. It are, are, are things that God reveals about the future. An example of that is Joseph, the dreamer. Uh, when he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And he gives Pharaoh a word of wisdom that you are to save a certain percentage in the year of abundance so that in the year of famine comes you are able to dispense uh, the, the things that you need. so that is the word of wisdom prophetic prophecy is speaking God's heart and mind to a situation how does this three work hand in hand example we were in Hawaii, just like only with, with Juno Foon. If we were one person, we were prophesying to probably 90 to 100 people. In Maui. So we were, we were there, and Juno Foon in another room, Jim Richards in another room, Roger Robertson was in the other room. Uh, anyway, uh, all these guys, and I was in another room. And, and we would huddle, and Pastor Jim would always tell us, okay, let's race. And then we would, we would we would have time ourselves with 90 people, 100 people. You should be done in two hours. Okay, Jim always wins. They all have to be prophesied really quick. But anyway, I was I was in that in this room and asked, there was this lady. She was very tall. She was wearing all white. Probably six one, maybe maybe probably a little bit taller than you, Bertie. I want your height. Five nine. Okay, you're same height as me, but. But she was probably six feet, and her hair was still here. Then you said she was like from the Jesus movement. You know, she was wearing oh, white, and, 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 and every time, so they they would walk until they come to me. I would be seated right in front, and people would come one by one and sit down, and I would give them a word. So she would be coming, and every time she would walk, she would she would look at me, and stare at me. <laughs> so her eyelash was going, you know, and then finally it was her turn, and I was sitting here, I was sitting here, and then she came up front, and the way she came up was like this, she was coming up, and then she sat down, and she looked at me, and then she was looking at me, it's almost like daring me, okay, prophesy to me. <laughs> Man, you know what I did, I closed my eyes, because I was so indignant. <laughs> And, and, and I, I didn't have a word yet. So I closed my eyes. I said, God help me. Give <laughs> him a word for this person. <laughs> and the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. The Lord gave me a word that she was abused by, by people in authority. It's almost like, it's almost like when she was eight years old, she was she was abused. And that she mistrusts authority. And I was telling to the Lord, Lord, how am I going to share that? I can't embarrass her. Remember, that word of knowledge was for my information. If I share that publicly, that would embarrass her. Now, prophecy is already declaring the solution to that problem. You understand the, 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 the difference now? Prophetic now is beginning to declare the solution to the issues that God showed me. So I will go back to the start of my eyes were closed. And I gave her a word and said, The Lord says, My daughter, I know the things that happened to you when you were very young. And the Lord says, I'm healing your heart right now. And the, and the Lord says that I'm going to begin to even erase some of the, the pain and and some of the hurt that you've experienced with people in authority. And then I started to be extra about it exactly what I, what I told her. But I said that the Lord's going to begin to change it. When I was, when I was praying for her and prophesying, when I, her was, when I opened my hands a little bit just to watch, <laughs> watch her, man, she was crying like a baby. And she was close to her eyes. And then when I stood up, she was 6 1. She started to embrace me. And then she went back, and I go, <laughs> I was so I was so relieved, you know, that, that God, you know, 
Thank you, good God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But you see, sometimes all this word not in the sermon, they're only given to us so that we could be a blessing to people. You know this. Anybody here know this that when you talk about the sermon, the sermon is almost always is related to something negative. It's, it's always about a negative thing. Let's say you go to a person, let's say you met a person, and then you go to your friend. I deserve this person as a demon. I mean, it's, it's always negative. And then you go, it's always, it's always like service, demonic oppression in this place. I don't know what the sermon has to do with something negative all the time. So I encourage people, if you if the Lord's giving you negative discernment about a person, then I, then I encourage them, then why don't you go deeper and find the treasure that God put in them? Because God has something he, that he has deposited in each person. And so many times we we fail, we stop discerning the good in people. And then once we do that, then we can speak a word of prophecy that will build them up. Remember, remember in Ezekiel, was that Ezekiel 33? Oh, Ezekiel 37, rather. Right, you can write it down. Remember when when Ezekiel was if uh, was in the valley of dry bones? And God let him let him stand there. And God said, speak life. And now, for, for some of us, sometimes we're so familiar with speaking the obvious. And sometimes, is he going to have done, you bones, your own bed, you you cancer, you <laughs> But God said, I want you to stand up there and I want you to speak life to this valley of dry bones. You may have to speak to the, to the dead bones and the Bible says that there was a rattling sound because it came to life. You know, many times, every time I prophesy to people, sometimes I discern something negative. Like, for example, when I discern somebody who's not reading his Bible, I don't go to him, but the Lord says, man, you're not reading the Bible. <laughs> And most of the sins that people, you know, have, they know it already. So I have to say, okay, Lord, how am I going to inspire them? That he goes out wanting to read the Bible. So you know, I will prophesy something that for the Lord says, my son. I'm going to begin to reveal myself to you. Even as you begin to discover my word, you're going to begin to find gold in that word. And you begin to literally change your life. So the Lord says, I have a calling in your life. And I'm going to begin to use you in ways that you cannot imagine. Man, after a prophecy, I'm like, wow, yes. How do you know he was corrected without him knowing? Because we spoke life to him. That's prophecy. Counseling is different. So don't confuse counseling and prophecy. If you are in a, in a place of counseling and you, you're sitting there and it's a counseling situation, I mean, speak truth to him in love. But when it comes in a prophetic moment, then speak solution already. I hope that uh, that made it clear for us. I, I, is it helping you guys? Yes. You know, you know, there's so much I can share with you. That's why sometimes I, sometimes I, now let me give you some of the ways that God speaks. Uh, I told you the word of God is always the basis for for for, for His word. But there are springboards. You know what's a springboard? A springboard is is uh, when you go to a swimming pool. Uh, there's what we call the springboard. The springboard is used to catapult the, the, swim, the, the swimmer or the diver so that he can jump higher. There are, there are springboards 
that God uses in order for us to help us hear God. The first springboard is what I call uh, well, number two, in the, in the, God has different means of communicating with his people. And then number three, you say, the first way that God does sometimes is through seeing. Uh, it's seen by the Spirit. Sometimes God gives us mental images. Okay, uh, so God gives us uh, mental images. Anybody here, God has given use to you by giving you visions or mental images of people. That could be sometimes the springboard that God uses to speak to, to, to us towards other people. It's, uh, it's uh, seen by the Spirit. Okay, we don't have time to read that. Number two, visions. Sometimes God gives us a vision. So maybe sometimes you're not sleeping, you're awake, but sometimes the Lord gives you a vision. Remember, it was the time of Elisha when he prayed for his servant to open his eyes. All of a sudden, his eyes were open and then he began to see the spiritual realm. Now, anybody here experienced visions already? Anybody here? You're awake, you're something you see good. Okay, I pray. How about you? Uh, you experienced visions? Okay, that's good. You know what? Sometimes I move in the prophetic, but I rarely move in this. And sometimes I ask the Lord, Lord, I want to see visions, but sometimes, Lord, don't, not too scary, Lord. <laughs> and sometimes God also, also uh, uses dreams. Anybody here, the Lord uses you in dreams. The Lord uses you in dreams. Okay. Now, let me talk about dreams a little bit. Let, first of all, let me say that you're not weird that you dream. Because we have a few, actually, actually, a lot in the Philippines that dreams. Some people dream, you know, things that would happen. Like we had a person in our, our church in the Fort Bonifacio. Sometimes they would dream that this building would fall, and true enough, this building failed. That a, a, a new building that was being constructed and it fell. He, she dreamt it. There was a person also in our church in Tatlova when there was a the typhoon Haiyan. She first dreamt, dreamt it before it actually happened. Uh, there are people in our church that, that, that dreams. There was this particular particular lady, and not actually lady, well she's lady, but she was probably 18, 19 years old. She had dreams and she would go to her church in Green Hills and she would tell the dad. Hey dad, you know, I had this dream, I had this. And the dad didn't know how to handle her. So the dad got scared. He was, don't tell me, I don't want to know, I don't want to know your dream. So he would refer to the pastor, Pastor Dennis. And Pastor Dennis didn't know what to do. So she, Pastor Dennis calls me. And he tells me, can you meet with this with this girl? And better, why don't you meet a group of people that does dreams, that see dreams? So I met them in a restaurant. And we were sitting there and we were talking. And then I asked them your dreams. And then all of a sudden, you know, like the first thing I told them, I said, first of all, I just want to say that you guys are not weird. Man, they started crying. Because they felt that they were weird. They felt like this was, it was, am I weird that I dream all of this? And then I had to show them the scripture in Joel chapter 2. That your sons and daughters will prophesy, they will dream dreams. You know, that's part of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And I'm teased in Manila, they say that I head up a ministry of mutants. <laughs> like Professor X. <laughs> they say, oh, I'm oh, perfect. Oh, he's a mutant. Let him go to Pastor Jojo. He trains all these mutants. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they tell me I train all these people that are unusual, you know. So I have to tell them that they're not weird. And I have to tell them that, that, that God has given us dreams for a reason. Now, some dreams are negative. A lot of our dreams that, that people receive are negative. That not all dreams are literal. Okay. The worst thing that you can do if you have a negative dream about a person, you don't go to that person and tell that dream to that person. Like for example, I kid you not, about three years ago, somebody came up to me 
said, I swear, I, I drank the vodka. And I'll show you where it's at. Come on, tell me. Like, oh, I dream that you're going to be in a big mansion, big house, and you know, I'm so excited to hear the dream. But the dream was, Pastor, you know, I had a dream, so I was okay, yeah? yeah. I dreamt, Pastor, that you died. <laughs> it's almost like my faith was. <laughs> but I, I was so affected for one whole week. What did you do to yourself? Please do not do that. Do not go to anybody who's not mature. Because not, not all dreams are literal. Dreams should be symbolic. Let's say if there's a recurring dream that repeats itself all the time. About maybe a certain leader, maybe falling or something like that. Maybe it's a call for you to pray for that person. Maybe it's a call for you to pray for the leadership of the church. But it may not be literally that person. Now, if you dread one thing, and then you woke up in the middle of, uh, let's say you woke up in the morning, you totally forgot it, then that's just a regular dream. You don't even have to think about it. What are you saying? And, He'll make you remember if God is speaking. Uh, okay? So please do not dream, you know, I had a, I had a dream that, that, you know, I saw the pastor is with another woman. <laughs> that, that may not be true, but it's probably a call for you to pray. <laughs> That's why many times when God, when God gives you a dream, ask God to interpret that dream. I think you have pastor. You have pastor Hope here. So if you guys have dreams, run it, run it by the people that you trust people over you. The worst thing that you can do is go to a regular member of the church. Oh, and then this person will go, you know, he had the dream. And then later on, you know the game that passed the message game? <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know that game the, the person will say the message and the, by the time it reaches to the, the end, the message totally changed. <laughs> and by that time, all the thing that the end, the end result of that, that, oh, the pastor is with another girl. <laughs> so you see, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So dreams, God uses dreams. All through scripture, God uses dreams. Joseph, God used dream to dreams in the, the New Testament. Sometimes hearing, sometimes God used the hearing abilities, hearing. Seeing and hearing number four. Anybody you hear, anybody you hear uh, by the Spirit, you know, you hear things by the Spirit. So those are some of the things that the, the Lord uses hearing. And number five, feeling. Feeling. Sometimes you feel the emotion of people. Sometimes that, that's how God begins to, to speak uh, to us. Amen. Now why don't we why don't we put down your notes? I want you to get the partner. Okay, come on up. Don't be scared. Get the partner. No, please stand. Please stand and get a partner. You can get out of your chairs. You can all scatter. Get a partner. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Just get a partner. Preferably somebody that you don't know too well. Get a partner. Okay. Get a partner. Okay, make sure that everybody has a partner. Jason, stay here now. Stay here in front. Okay, get a partner. How about you? You're tired. <laughs> but this will encourage you. It's practice. Okay, okay, listen, okay, look at your partner straight in the eye, look at them, 
You can put it under paper, you can put it under piece of paper, put it under pens, put it under pens. Okay, okay. get a partner. <laughs> Make sure that everybody has a partner. Okay. Okay, everybody has a partner. Look at that partner and say, it's just practice. <laughs> it's just practice. And ask the partner, can, uh, permission, can I practice on you? Okay. Okay. I will demonstrate. Okay. Uh, what's, what's, what's that? Here. I will demonstrate. This is what I call perfecting praying. You are not going to ask that person any prayer request. What you're going to do, you're going to ask the Spirit of God and say, God, what does this person need prayer for? And there is a prayer that the, the person needs prayer. Okay? And so I ask the Lord and I begin to pray for that. So, so Lita, right? So let me pray. Lord, thank you for Lita. Lord, I, I, I pray today, Lord God, that this year, that she would walk in the fullness of your purpose. Lord, for the past year, she has been longing, she's been asking for confirmation. I ask you today that you give her courage and faith to step out of the boat. Even as Peter walked on water, she, she walked in the supernatural realm because he heard your voice. The voice that says, Come. Lord, I pray today that Lita would hear your voice in a clear way. And Lord, provision will come. That she would not be afraid of provision. That she would not be afraid of a lack of it. Because she will experience the miraculous power of God. Lord, I thank you that Lord that you have prepared her for such a time. Lord, I pray that Lord that she would open her eyes to see the bigness of your purpose for her life. And Lord, thank you that you're removing every fear and you're replacing it with faith. Because you love her. Amen. Amen. So how was that? Good, good, good. That's good. Praise God. So amen. So I didn't ask her anything. I didn't know anything, but I, I just felt like that was what she needed prayer for. But I can get later on when we start prophetic, that will be different. So so but but how many all how many here believe that you can hear God? We all hear God. If even if you're not sure, just lift up your hands. <laughs> because you do. Okay? You're not lying. It's not my faith. You hear God. Third, okay? tell your partner, you hear God. You hear God. Okay? Okay? So, anybody here nervous? Okay. Okay. Nobody? Okay. Every time we do this, a lot of people are nervous. And they're all. You're all, you're all so nervous. That's why it when I tell them it's practice. It's prophetic prayer. Okay. We, let me give you some guidelines. We are not going to pray for... Number one, we're not going to pray for their future spouse. Okay? We're not going to say, Lord, thank you that, you know, that you're going to marry that person there right now. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about Lord, this person is a sinner. <laughs> Lord, we're, not, we're not gonna mention anything. Remember for encouragement, for strength, for comfort. Okay? So those are the two things. Uh, that, that some guidelines to bless the person and encourage the person. Okay? Okay, now we're gonna pray. We're, we're gonna pray. Okay. Okay, let's all pray in the spirit for a while. Let's pray in tongues. Come on, pray in the one. Do 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 one. Lord, open our ears to hear, just to discern just your thoughts about my partner. Areas that my partner needs prayer for. 
，奇怪。麻子。Look at your partner and smile. You say it's practice. I'm going to practice on you. Whether you like it or not. Okay. Determine who goes first. Lift up your hands. If you're, if you're, okay. We're going to do one minute each. I'm going to time it. I'm going to look at the clock. You don't have to worry. I'm going to do one minute each. And then when they say stop, right in the middle of your prayer, you stop. Okay? Okay. One, two, go. Prayer, prayer only. So that was exactly the prayer you needed. 
Man, everybody's prophetic already. <laughs> so I think I did my job. Okay, anybody? Yes. I need to pray before God every day and walk in God's way. He prayed for you. Yeah, he's prayer for him. Wow, okay, what was, oh, he was sharing the prayer that he gave to him? Yeah, or, yeah. So, the good? Yes. Good. Let's give him a big hand. Anybody else? Grace pray for me. And then, uh, and uh, what do you call this? 
uh, and, and don't uh, and go to them. For the Lord says, my daughter, Pura <laughs> Mama That's the moment. <laughs> so, so the whole time you're just thinking what to say, you know. Now, sometimes the words that we get are simple words. And sometimes when it's simple, we don't want to share it because we feel it's too simple. You see, what is simple for you? May not be simple for them. Like for example, we were in China. I don't know if you remember this. Years back, we did a perfect press with hundreds and hundreds of people. We were getting tired, and so I decided to simplify the prophetic word, so that you know I can give them simple words so that they can they can. You know, I was so tired. And there was one time this girl came. I just said, "The Lord says I love you." Man, she started to cry like a baby. And she started calling more people. <laughs> so, oh gosh, it didn't work. <laughs> so, so sometimes what is simple to us is not simple to them. So never dismiss uh, just because the words that you're getting is just so simple. But that's exactly what people need to hear. Now, so, so we will tell you, you can just you can say, the Lord says to my daughter that I've watched you. The Lord says, even before you knew me, I called you. And there were times that, that you felt the, the promptings of my spirit. But there are times that it, you're terrified by the leading of the spirit. Because there are some experiences growing up where you felt like things did not happen exactly that you expected to be. In fact, promises were given to you when you were very young. And sometimes there were many unfulfilled promises and that pain you that hurt you. And so there are times right now that when the promptings of the spirit will come, you hesitate. But the Lord says, a season is coming. Where are you going to begin to hear my voice in a new way? And I've surrounded you with people that you can trust. And the Lord says, I received your worship. And I long when you worship. And the Lord says that, that the favor is upon you, but you don't know it. The Lord says there's many things that you've asked of me, but you asked for the small things. And you've been afraid to ask for the big things because you felt like, God, you know, if I ask for the big things, I might get hurt again. But the Lord says, I'm a father that will not hurt you. I'm a father that will not shortchange you. Notice my daughter, even, even this year, the Lord says, I'm going to begin to surprise you with new things. And the Lord says, even as you enter in 2016, the Lord says, will be your year of breakthrough. And the Lord says, the days of running is over, the Lord says. Because there are moments in your life when you felt like you had to run, you had to run, and you had to run. Not, not because you, 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 you've been running consciously, but it's unconscious. Because you felt like you just had to run away. But the Lord says that, come home to me, the Lord says. And home is where my presence will be. And the Lord says, you're going to begin to find confirming words even in this city. And the Lord says, this will not be the last city for you, the Lord says. In fact, the Lord says, I'm going to open more doors for you. So notice, my daughter, it's a new day. It's a new season for you. And, and the Lord says, I'm removing every fear. And I've come to the deep recesses of your heart to heal you in new ways, the Lord says. I'm restoring relationships. There has been a relationship that has been severed about 10 years ago. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to heal that. And the Lord says, you don't have to run. The Lord says, because I am with you. There's a new season that's coming upon you, the Lord says. Yeah. Yeah. that make sense? <laughs> Praise God. See, see? Uh, of course, we have to remember, I've been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> so, so, so you don't have to do a have to process. No, you don't. That's why it's practice. So it's practice. So, so, amen. amen. I started like all of us. Okay. Game? You have a partner? So you don't have a partner. Okay, no, okay. 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 Decide who goes first. <clears throat> remember, remember, okay, remember the guidelines, you're not going to prophesy the future wife, the future spouse. You're not going to prophesy, you're not going to prophesy sin in that person. Okay, who's first, who's first? Lift up your hands, you go first. Okay. Okay, guys, let's pray in tongues, pray in spirit. Let's be quiet. Begin to hear what the Spirit of God is saying regarding that verse.
Okay, open your eyes, smile. Look at the partner and say, this is practice. This is practice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you one minute. The first person when they say, one, two, go. First person, for the Lord says, my son. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, Adora. Talk to this, Adora. Okay, anyone else? Who wants to share what you receive? Prophetic word that you receive? Anyone? Why are you here? You, you guys had a great word in all of a Yes, first of all. Mine was really touching from Kelly because um, the things that she said to me um, were also the things that God told me in the first exercise, and so it was confirmed. Wow. Um, wow. And it was just simple, but Kelly said, yeah, she just said, every step of the way, I'm with you, and um, the things that you want to do, your dreams, they're like, they're my gifts to you, so just receive them, and I'm with you, my presence is with you, don't be afraid. He prayed for you. Okay, he brought it. Uh, he prayed for you and he said, uh, there, will, there will be a new beginning in my future. Uh, what's about my school? Because I'm going to graduate. Uh, she, uh, yeah. Wow! Yes. Amazing. And, you know, I'm so I'm really so proud of you. Just, uh, just I've seen you grow. You know, just in the last two days I met you yesterday, but all of a sudden there has been like a like an openness. 
And you're going to begin to hear God in a new way. I think my job was done. <laughs> I think my whole goal here was for you guys to be able to prophesy and you guys are prophesying. Now, can I apologize in advance because I don't think I can finish the last lesson. Uh, we just have 20 minutes. So I'd like to finish these principles that, that we need to understand. These are the principles that, that, that will guide you when receiving a word and when giving a word. Okay, the first principle that I want to look at is, the, is what I call the shepherd principle. You have to ask yourself the question. Does the prophetic word come in a way that gently leads you? The Bible talks about in John 10 uh, that the shepherd, the shepherd speaks in the sheep, hear the voice, and he calls the sheep by name. In other words, you know, Psalm 23 talks about the, the shepherd. Uh, was that what Psalm 23? How does that go again? Um, he's my shepherd. I shall not want to lead me inside white waters. So when the prophetic word comes, is it, does it come in a way that gently leads you? Do you feel the shepherd's heart you know, being, being given? Sometimes your word could be accurate, but sometimes the, the way that was delivered was not accurate. Let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say uh, there's a word that's given to uh, what you mean? Cat. Cat. Let's say, the, let's say I'm, I'm giving a word to Cat. Maybe the word is that the Lord says that, you know, I'm for you, I'm going to be with you, I will protect you and all that. You can, you can say it accurately. But what if I said it in a way, the Lord's going to protect you, the Lord's going to protect you, the Lord's going to protect you. You know what I mean? The, the word is accurate, but the manner in which it was given was not accurate. So there's a conflicting thing that the word is supposed to comfort, but the manner in which it was given was not was not in a, in a way uh, congruent to the uh, to the word. So it does have a, a, a an element where where it sends the shepherd's heart. Number two principle yeah. we need to understand is that the comforter principle. In John 14, you will find the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. He guides us into all truth. He's the comforter. He's the helper. So when he speaks, it, it comforts us. So many times when I, when I give a prophetic word to people, I ask myself, the, 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 I, I, I make sure God, I pray that you, the people sense your comfort. The people sense your, 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 your hand, your spirit. And then another principle is this, the still small voice principle. Uh, you know the voice, you know, sometimes I realize that God speaks in a way that's, that's really gentle, that's really uh, quiet. That's why many times God tells us to be still and know that He is God. Because He wants us to come to a place of stillness. He wants us to come to a place where, where it's quite where he begins to hear us. We hear him. Right? Uh, in that the, the chapter in First Kings 19, Elijah thought that God was in the, was in the earthquake, earthquake came, he wasn't there. So he thought, he thought that maybe God was going to be in the fire. He wasn't there, but he came. 
through that small gentle whisper, the gentle oh, whisper. The next principle is what, what I call the conviction versus condemnation principle. You know, conviction, when the Spirit of God begins to convict, conviction is specific. And, and every time the Lord begins to convict us, you feel the, the love of the Father still. You can be rebuked. And, and bring conviction, but you know it's God, and you know you can end up repenting. And you say, God, I'm sorry for for what I've done. Condemnation, on the other hand, is vague in its general. It's just you have an overall feeling of heaviness, and and it's not God. So, so I hope that when you begin to, when the Lord begins to speak. You, when people begin to prophesy over you, can determine which is which is the Holy Spirit speaking. And last, is, uh, not actually two more, the power principle. Uh, the power principle is when you know that when the prophetic word comes, you know he brings power with that word. Uh, you know, let, let me give you two, uh, some. Sometimes when you receive a prophetic word. It might, it might not make sense at that present moment. Especially when you speak more about the future. There was one person again. Can I say another story? Another person was uh, prophesying over a couple. And I was prophesying over them and then again the facial expression changed. And uh, and uh, because I was prophesying that, that I was prophesying about the Middle East. That they were going to move to the Middle East. So after, after, after the prophetic word, they did not even get the copy of the prophecy. Because they felt like he missed it, you know. He and then after six months, the husband receives a call from Dubai. The, the, the company was hiring him to go to Dubai. Now at that time we did not register to them about the prophetic word given six months ago. And then the next day, I don't know, I think the next day after two days, there was a call that was uh, from Dubai as well. This time for the wife. This time for the wife. And then and then they looked at the company, the company the husband, the company, they looked, they searched it on Google. They found out that the companies were right next to each other. And then they looked at each other, they go, Wow, that was a prophecy that was given six months ago. They went back to the church. They wanted the copy of the prophetic word. It was gone. That was our church in Santa Rosa. You know, sometimes you don't know. But the prophetic word has power to be able to fill in accordance. With. There was also one time a girl from Vietnam. It was a school of all nations in Manila. And uh, I was giving her, I was giving her uh, prophetic word. All of a sudden, I just said that I hear your voice in the airwaves. And I said, I don't know if it's radio or TV, but I just heard your voice. People in Vietnam will hear your voice. Uh, yeah, I don't know the shame. Basically, that was the word. And then she left and scratching her head, everybody scratching her head. Uh, weird, you know, weird uh -huh. and, so, and so, a year after, uh, she was looking for a job. There was no job for her. So she said, Why don't I find this TV station? She applied, and she became the newscaster of this TV station. And everybody in Vietnam hears her voice. Television. Pastor Michael Paderes told me that story and I could not believe it. Now, I'm not saying that to put glory to myself because I'm good. I'm just telling you I was clueless when I was giving it. And so it's just by the Spirit of God. So sometimes prophetic words may not make sense at that particular moment. But it does make sense later. But it does, uh, it does have power to fulfill uh, his work. The next one is what I call the peace principle. Peace. When the Lord gave it to speak, it brings peace, not confusion. There was one time uh, a couple came up to me. We were doing a prophetic presbytery. And this couple received a word from one of our ministers. And this, the word that they received from this minister was that their marriage, the message that they got that their marriage wasn't good. And so they were, he came, they came up to me and told me, you know, prophesied that my marriage wasn't good. But if I heard this prophecy about five years ago, 
That one could have been accurate. But our marriage is doing good now. But I don't know why it's working. And you know what? It brought confusion to the to them. And so I told them that you know, nullify that word. That's not that word is not from God. And what I did with the minister was not to rebuke him, but to encourage him. He probably missed God, but he has a good heart. And so sometimes when you sometimes the when the word comes, you have to ask, is it bringing peace in your in your heart or bring confusion in some people? So those are some of the principles that you need to begin to ask yourself when when uh, when you begin to minister to people. So my prayer is that I I pray and hope that all of us would, would really uh, come to a place of of really knowing His voice in a new way. You see, prophecy was never meant to replace our devotion to God. So I hope that we don't get so addicted to prophecy that we fail spending time with Him. And so prophecy, always true prophecy, always makes us hungry for the Word of God and for the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Um, I know we just have uh, 10 more minutes, but can I pray just a little bit? Just, yeah, let's just uh, pray uh, just a few moments. Lord, thank you for our time today. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Bertina, I have a word for Bertina. Can I, can, I, can I share a word for Bertina? Is that part of the staff later? Later. Yeah. Oh, should I just share it later? Okay. Oh, you okay. Um, we're, we're, okay. Why don't Why don't you record it? I, I just feel like I have the moment, the, the time now, so I just want to share it now. Um, Bertie, have you seen that movie? The movie. I'm sure you, you've seen that movie, Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, remember that scene when Rafiki was? Uh, they were in the desert. They were far off, and and then Rafiki goes uh, to uh, Simba. You have forgotten. And then he and then he began he begins to tell him, look, he leads him to the place, uh, to the pond. And then he said, Look. And then when he was looking, and all of a sudden his father appeared. And then the father begins to uh what's the name of the dad again? Mofasa. You have forgotten who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then then Simba began to realize what what I couldn't understand really. You know, I felt like the Lord, uh, uh, Bertina, you've been a servant, you've been excellent, the Lord's pleased with your heart, the Lord's pleased with your serving, even here, and you've sacrificed so much, and there were opportunities for you uh, to be somewhere else, but you decided to be here. But the Lord has planned it from the beginning for you to be here, to show you some things. And the Lord's going to begin to open your eyes to see who you really are. And sometimes, when you look at yourself, and you find yourself just, just, well, I'm just here and happy and content. But the Lord says, I have bigger dreams than what you have. And the Lord has bigger things for you. And the Lord has prepared things for you. And the Lord is saying to you, Bertina, I'm giving you the best. I'm not going to give you the crumbs. I'm not going to give you something that's second best. In fact, there were big dreams that you have. And the Lord says, my dreams for you is bigger than what people offered to you. And there were blueprints that was given to you. You had a back. And the Lord says, you are not yet walking in the fullness that I have for you. And the Lord says that this year will be a year of discovery for you. You're going to begin to discover who you are. And there's going to be divine connections that I'm going to give you. And you look at yourself as one who ministers to young people. The Lord says, I'm going to begin to cross you over. Yes, there's going to be people, young people. But the Lord says, I'm going to begin to connect you to the high and mighty even in this city. I'm going to give you the women that are influential, the women that are rich and famous in, the, in this place. You're going to begin to rub shoulders with them. And many times you felt like you're a nobody, but the Lord says, no, that's what you think. So the Lord says, no, you are somebody in my eyes. And the Lord says, brand new things are coming upon you, the Lord says. And I'm going to begin to change you more than what, it's going to amaze you, it's going to baffle you. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you new things. I'm going to give you the best that the world will offer. The Lord says, you've been meet before me. And sometimes you feel apologetic when he blesses you. But the Lord says, do not worry, I'm going to bless you with nice clothes. I'm gonna, I, it's a funny thing, but the Lord's going to bless you with a good thing. I'm going to put ring, rings on your fingers. And the Lord says, because you're going to begin to minister to people, and 
many times that has not been your heart, that has never been your heart to take on what's what's fashionable, but what, what the Lord says no. The Lord says your the, the face of this congregation is going to begin to change. There's going to be I'm going to prophesy that tomorrow, but there, there's going to be a face that it's going to begin to happen in this house. The way you see this church is going to be so different the next two years. And and the Lord says I'm going to bring people here that in your mind how can that person be here in this church. And the Lord says, you're going to be right in the middle of what I'm going to begin to do, Bertina. You are amazing. And you're, there's a teaching anointing. In fact, there's a preaching anointing that's also upon you. And you have not really discovered and fully accepted that part of your life. And the Lord says that uh, you're going to begin to know me in a new way. And uh, watch what I do, the Lord says, this year, even in the coming years. Amen? Amen. Well, can we end because I'm tired? <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We'll have a, at least for the staff, we'll have a 15 minute break, right? Yeah. And then we'll I'll start to listen to the staff. God bless you. I apologize again. We didn't finish the material. <laughs>